respected elders and brothers, mothers and sisters, last week, alhamdulillah, we finished and concluded the tafsir of Surah al -Nur. And we learned, uh, alhamdulillah, many things. Uh, this week, inshallah, we will start the tafsir of Surah Yasin. It's a very dear surah to all of us. Uh, it's been said in the hadith that Yasin is the about to pass away. You see the signs of death on them. We taught Yasin forgiving. And that is not something difficult or hard upon Allah Azza wa Jal. So what Yasin is the Qalb al Quran, the heart of the Quran. You know, the, the Quran is made of 30 juz, and the, the 23rd, the 20, 22nd juz finishes a page and a half after Surat Yasin. And then the 23rd juz starts from Wali Ala Ahmadullah, which is from the middle of Surat Yasin. So when he used to do hifz and memorize the Quran, we used to have a teacher, Ali Ahsan from Pakistan. And a lot of times students would start memorizing the 22nd and continue and stop in the middle of Surah Yasin. So he would say, don't break the heart of the Quran. And it's finished in Surah Fatir, and then the 23rd just start from Yasin and then continue. And don't break the heart of the Quran. So anyhow, that is uh, a brief... Uh, uh, virtue of Surah Yasin. So Yasin, this is from the Huruf al muqattaat So those letters which uh, we don't know what they mean. Some say Yasin is the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just like Taha. Some say that. Wal Quran al Hakim, Allah is taking an oath by the wise Quran. By the wise Quran. Wal Quran al Hakim. There are many reasons why people take oath. Right? Why we take oath, one of the reasons is when we're in court. Right, we raise our hand and we take an oath that I will say the truth and only the truth, etc. Or we take an oath when we're angry. Right, someone makes us angry and you say, Wallahi, I will stop doing this, I will stop doing that. Just like in the last surah, remember, so at the note, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he made an oath. And he said that by Wallahi, he will not continue giving money to his cousin who spread rumors about his, his daughter. So we also take oath when we're angry. We sometimes take oath for no reason, and that is uh, known as al Those who just say, Wallahi, I did this, Wallahi, brother, it's so hot today. You just keep saying Wallahi all the time, right? You hear how people say it a lot. Sometimes we take an oath to show that we are committed to something, right? Wallahi, I will do this, Wallahi, I will do that. To show our seriousness. Sometimes we also take an oath to show our honesty. Right, you're late to work and, 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 and you tell your boss that there was traffic or something in the room and you say, oh, Allah, and you know, just say whatever you need to say to convince him. But the Arabs, they used to use an oath for some other reasons as well. Sometimes when they wanted attention from people, they used to take an oath. And the thing they used to take an oath by was the subject that they were going to talk about. So let's say, I, I want to come to you and take, bring your attention, grab your attention, and tell you about something that's going to happen tomorrow morning that's very serious. So I will just start by saying, Wa sabah, whoa morning, or by the morning. You already have an idea, this guy's going to talk to me about the morning, something is about to happen in the morning. So that's one thing the Arab used to use it for. And in the Quran, we find another reason why Allah uses an oath in the Quran, or, and that is, the thing that Allah is taking an oath by is a witness to what's about to come, what it's going to talk about. For example, Allah says, by time, men are lost. So what does time have to do with that? Meaning time is a witness that men are lost. If you look at history, you will see that men, human mankind, have always been in loss. Uh, to whatever it comes, whether their goals in life, their goals in the akhirah. Time is a proof, is an evidence. You will see if you look into time, if you search history, if you study history, you will see that men have always caused chaos. They were in loss. Wayasikuddima, Allah said, right? And the people down, they will cause bloodshed on earth and kill one another, right? Um, so the ass of the time is a witness to the fact that mankind are in loss, right? Similarly, Allah says, well, Quran al -Hakim. The wise Quran is a evidence, is a witness to what? 
that you are from those who are sent. You are from those who are sent. The Quran is a miracle proving that you are indeed a prophet. Whether the, the, the people around you, the Kuffar, the Quraysh, the, whether they agree to that, whether they want to believe in that or not, the Quran is a witness that you are the Musaleen. Ala sirat al-mustaqim, upon a straight path. You're not those, those people who falsely claim to be prophets, uh, in, uh, in, but in fact they're just you know magicians or whatever it might be. They're all astray. You are ala sirat al-mustaqim. Tanzeel al-Aziz al-Rahim, the Quran is a revelation from the Aziz, the Almighty, Exalted, al-Rahim, the Merciful. And Aziz al-Rahim, a lot of times uh, come together, right? Aziz means to be, to have strength and power and might. A lot of times when people have might and strength, they don't have rahmah, they lose rahmah. Allah is mighty, but at the same time, He's rahim. لِتُنذِرَ Why is the Quran sent to you? لِتُنذِرَ So that you can warn قَوْمًا Such a people مَا أُنذِرَ آبَاهُمْ Their fathers weren't warned. This is the Arab people. Uh, it has been a while, some time, some generation, some centuries have passed and no prophets came to the Arab. فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ And that's the reason why they're غَافِلُونَ They're unaware. Quran has been sent to you, you've been sent to the Arabs so that you can warn them and take them out of the, uh, out of, uh, the Zulubat in Al-Nur. لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِهِمْ فَهُمْ لَا يَبِنُونَ Verily the word, the verdict, the hukum of Allah Azza wa Jal has taken into effect on most of them that they will not be guided. فَهُمْ لَا يَبِنُونَ And that's the reason why they don't believe. إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي عَنَاخِمْ أَغْلَالًا The next verse, some say that it has been revealed regarding Abu Jahl and some of his colleagues. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, in the beginning, he used to read the Quran loudly in the Kaaba, around the Kaaba. And these, uh, the, the Quraysh, they were very annoyed and they wanted to take revenge. So Abu Jahl, one time, he went with the rock and he wanted to throw that at the Prophet ﷺ. But when he went there, he saw that his hand was frozen, stuck. As he, when he froze his hand, it was stuck right here around his neck. And then he came back and told his people that this is what happened. Someone else said, give me that same rock, I will go in and kill Muhammad with this rock. He goes there and then he hears the Prophet but he's unable to see the Prophet And then he gets you know, even more mesmerized. He comes back and he says, there's something crazy going on. I go there, I hear him, but I can't see him. So then I can aim at him. So Allah says, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا فِي أَعْنَاقِ أَغْلَالًا Verily, we have placed on their necks some shackles, أَغْلَالًا Fetters. This is round shackle that keeps their neck high. فَهِيَ إِلَى الْأَذْقَالِ And it's so high that it's keeping the ذُقُن the, 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 the shin is keeping it high. They can't even move. فَهُمْ مُقْمَحُونَ مُقْمَحْ It's said about a camel that when, when a camel, his head or neck is stuck high but it's trying to look down his head is stuck high but he's just trying to look down he, he really can't see what's under him he's trying to do that so their shatters and shackles are so tied to their necks that they can't even bend their neck down they're just trying to look down and that is referring to perhaps what Abu Jahl how his hand was stuck near his neck uh, so this is an example of how when Allah Azza wa misguides people that even if the truth is right in front of them, they won't, they won't be able to see that truth, right? So when these guys, their necks are up high, if there was something in front of them, between their legs, or right in front of them, under them, they wouldn't be able to see it. Similarly, the lies of the misguides people, they're unable to see the truth, even if it's right in front of their eyes. And we placed a wall in front of them, and a wall behind them. And we covered their eyes. And that's why they're unable to see. And this is perhaps referring to the second guy who went to throw the rock at the Prophet ﷺ. And you know, sometimes when I was young, some people were saying that when you are driving your car and you drive fast, or you beat the red light and you get pulled over, read this verse. We place the wall in front of them and the wall behind them, and that's why they're unable to see. Right? Then people just make up things, you know? Yeah, so they're like, you know, if you read this, they won't be able to catch you, they won't see you, or something like that. And it's the same thing. 
أأنذر them whether you warn them أم لم تنذروا or you don't warn them it's so it's the same thing لا يؤمنون they won't believe that's why hidayah is from Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم right when Allah gives a hidayah then people are guided otherwise you can bring the most obvious evidence in in front of them but they will just deny إنما تنذر من اتبع الذكر وخشي الرحمن بالغيب you only warn those people who follow اتبع الذكر who follow the remembrance, who follow the Qur'an, the message of the Qur'an. And what's the other thing that's very important? وَخَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ They have khashia and fear of Allah Azza wa Jalla while they're alone, غيب, in absence of everybody else. They have the khashia of Allah Azza wa Jalla. فَبَشِّرْهُ So give these people the glad tidings of what? بِمَغْفِرَ Of the forgiveness of Allah. And وَأَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ And a noble reward, which is Jannah. إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُحْبِ الْمَوْتَى It is indeed we are the ones that will give life, resurrect the death, the dead. وَنَكْتُبُ And we write مَا قَدَّمُ What they have put forth, what they have uh, sent forth. We will, meaning all the a'mal that we do, we're sending it forth for ourselves. And we write وَآثَارَهُمْ And the remnants, the effects that they leave behind. And what does that mean, right? It's in the, the Prophet ﷺ, it's in the hadith, مَنْ سَنَّ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ سُنَّةً حَسَنَةً Whoever starts a good practice in Islam, كَانَ لَهُ أَجْرُهَا وَأَجْرُ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ He will have the reward of starting that practice, and whoever else does that, follows him after that, he will get the reward of that as well. So that is the effect of what a person does. And the similar, same thing is the opposite. And whoever starts an evil deed, evil, bad habit and action in Islam, and people follow him after that, he will get the sin of that as well. In the hadith, uh, there was a, a tribe named Banu Salama. They used to live a little bit far away from the masjid, maybe a couple of blocks, two, three blocks, four blocks. And there was an, a, a, a place, a land for sale. You know, there was those what do you call those? The real estate guys, they put their sign there, it's for sale. It was open, it was close to the masjid. You know, when we go to a new neighborhood, we look for a masjid, and there's a masjid close by, right? Which is a good thing. So this Banu Salaba, they came and wanted to buy this land. And the Prophet Sallallahu heard about that these people, uh, Banu Salaba, they wanted to purchase this land. When they were asked, they said, Ya Rasul, the masjid is close by. We want to be close to the masjid. So then the Prophet Sallallahu told them, Diyarakum, stick to your place, stick to your house, stick to your land. Tuktabu atharukum, your athar, your traces are being recorded. And that is why some of us don't say athar here means the steps you take to go to the masjid. Right? So tuk diyarakum tuktabu atharukum. In other hadith, the Prophet said when a person dies, three things, uh, his actions are stopped, terminated, comes to an end except for three things. Except for this, what are the ilmi yuntafa'ubi? Some knowledge you spread, some people you taught, or some books you wrote, or you, a madrasa you opened up, people benefit from that knowledge. All of those things will be written for him. Or he left behind good children who make dua for him. He will get the reward of all of that as well. Or he leaves a sadaqa jariya after him, which he will continue to benefit and reap uh, its fruit even after he passes away. Like you make a well or, or something that people benefit from all the time. Or maybe you, you built and you donate towards like the microphone of the masjid, right? And you make the whole masjid here, the Quran, you get the word of that, right? Or maybe back in the days you, you, you built the mimbar or rather, you know, the minaret. Back in the days, the, the muazzin used to climb all the way up to the minaret and give a from there. So these are all different ways your traces will be recorded for you. And Allah, will, Allah records that. Um, and all of those things, Allah says, we have recorded it Imam in a clear book. Imam also means a book. Imam means an Imam that we know of. Imam means a book. Imam means a generation. Right? Uh, these are the different means of an imam. Uh, so imam can also be a book. وَاضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَصْحَابَ الْقَرِيَةِ And here we have an example, a story. Allah says, strike for them the example of the people of the village. So we don't know who those, uh, who those people are. 
Some say it was two people Isa salam sent to it him. But Allah doesn't mention here. The hint is that don't worry about who they are, but it's worry about the event, what happened. What's the story, what's the moral you can take from this? Idh Jah al Mursalun when the messengers came to them. So there's a village, the messengers came to them. Some say they're messengers of Allah Azza wa Jalla Prophets. And some say there were two messengers, Isa alayhi salam sent them to a town to give da'wah to them. If arsalna ilayhi muthnay, when we sent two messengers to them, فَكَذَّبُوهُمَا They said, you guys are liars. You guys are, you know, just making stuff up. They, they falsified them. So what happened? فَعَزَّزْنَا بِثَالِثِ We brought a third one. We strengthened them with the third man. And some say this was Habib al-Najjar. The third man, Isa alayhi salam sent. Some say it was someone who just came from the outskirts of that city, from the ghetto of the city. فَقَالُوا إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَلُّ He said, listen, we are sent to you. قَالُوا مَا أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُنَا They said, you are not but a man just like us. You eat, you die, you sleep. What do you say here, مُصَلُّ وَمَا أَنْزَلَ الرَّحْمَانُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Allah did not send anything down. إِنَّا أَنْتُمْ إِلَّا تَكْذِبُونَ You're just lying. قَالُوا They said, رَبُّنَا يَعْلَمْ Our Lord knows إِنَّا إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَلُّ and the only thing that's upon us is to tell you, is to let you know, is to give you the message. That's it. We can't force anyone to make actions or, or make, uh, you know, listen and obey. They said, They said, we think you're a bad omen, you're a curse. Whenever Allah sends Anbiya to a nation, to a people, He makes things hard for them so that they can remember, they can, uh, they can take lesson, they can perhaps try to start introspecting and do soul searching or maybe they have done something. So that, that is a reminder itself. They say, we think you're a bad omen, bad curse. You know how we say, sometimes people say that a, a crow is a sign of bad luck or a black cat is a sign of bad luck. And these things. They say, we think you're a bad omen. You came and our economy started going down. You're the problem. If you don't stop, we will stone you to death. And a painful punishment will reach to you from us, on behalf of us. And we'll punish you. They said, قَالُوا طَائِرُكُمْ مَعَكُمْ You and your omens, you, you keep with that, you stay with that. أَيْنْ ذُكِرْتُمْ Even if you're reminded, you still talk about omens and bad curses. بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمُ مُسْرِفُونَ You guys are just transgressors and you guys are just, uh, you know, uh, always israf, musrif, is to overdo something. A man came from the outskirt of the city. This is that man. Came running. He said, قَالَ يَا قَوْمُ Oh my people, اِتَّبِعُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ Follow the prophets. اِتَّبِعُوا مَنْ لَا يَسْأَلُكُمْ أَجْرًا Follow the one that doesn't ask you for any money. He's not giving you a, a lecture or a talk or advice so that you can give them their money. وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ And they're rightly guided. That's a sign when people don't ask you for money. They're just giving you advice for your own good. And this guy, he came from the outskirts of the city, he says, وَمَا لِيَلَا And what's the matter with me? لَا أَعْمُدُ الَّذِي فَطَرَانِ That I am not going to worship the one who created me. The reason why he's saying, why is, what's the matter with me that I don't worship the one who created me, is actually telling them what's the matter with you that you're not worshiping the one that created you. The reason why he says me, that's how we all talk, right? When you give advice to someone, you don't say, why don't you do this? Or you did this. We, we say what? We, right? You include the speaker to that as well. That makes it lighter on the listeners. Uh, so that you're not accusing them or you're not. So he says, what's wrong with me that I'm not worshiping the one that created me? Meaning he's saying, what's wrong with you that you're not wor worshiping the one that created you? وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And to him all of you will go back to. أَتَّخِذُ مِن دُونِ آلِهَا Shall I take God beside him? So basically he's telling them, how can you take God beside him? And he's giving now a reason why. If the Rahman, if Allah wants a dur, a musibah, a problem for me, the intercession of all these other gods that you worship will not benefit me. Right? Whoever you want to call the saints, right? A lot of and people have seen the Saint John universe. You know what Saint is to them? Saint is someone who passed away, and it has been proven that that person, after dying, was able to answer someone's call in this world. 
when that happens, then they start calling people saints. So anything besides Allah that you ask for help and you ask for intercession, none of them can help if any problem comes to me from Allah. So how can I worship anything besides Allah? Inni dhamma fi malali mubeen. I would definitely be in clear error if I do that. Meaning you would be in clear error if you do that. Inni amantu bi rabbikum fasma'oon. I have believed and brought iman in your Lord. So listen to me. Qila dhul jannah. It was said, enter jannah. So Ubasil would say that this guy who came from the outskirts of the city, reminding them to obey the prophets, they killed him. They all stepped and stampeded on him until his uh, intestines came out. So he, they, they killed him brutally. And then Allah told him, told him, Udhul Jannah, enter Jannah. Some say, you know, right away he went to Jannah, and it is possible, right? Like Isa alayhi salam, he was raised to the heavens. So people can be in Jannah now, even though before Qiyamah. So some say he already went to Jannah, some say he will go to Jannah. But Allah said to him, enter Jannah. When he got there, he said, Qala ya layta qawmi ya'lamu. He said, woe, woe to me. Or I wish ya layta qawmi that my people ya'lamun, they knew the truth, they saw the truth. Right? Rabbi, how my Lord has forgiven me. And he made me from the honored ones, meaning in Jannah, the, the blessings he has and how he is, the peaceful he is. After witnessing that stuff, he's saying that I wish my people knew this. I wish my people had yaqeen and belief in this so that they would follow the messengers that came to them. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, these people, they brutally killed him, right? If Allah wanted, He could have sent down angels from the sky. He could have sent down a punishment from, from the sky. And in, in milliseconds, everyone would have been done. But Allah says, وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ مِنْ جُنْدِهِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ We did not send an army from the sky after this guy passed away. We did not. Because there was no need to. We don't need to send down angels. وَمَا كُنَّا مُنْزِلِ And we weren't going to send either. All is that happened is what? In كَانَتْ إِلَّا صِيحَةً وَاحِدًا There's only one scream that was there. فَإِذَا هُمْ خَامِدُونَ They were done, finished. Just one scream. So someone asked, can people die from a scream, from a loud noise, right? It's possible. There's a measurement of, of sound, how many decibels. We as human beings, we can tolerate up to 80 decibels. And then after that, when it reaches about 150, the sound reaches 150, we can die from that from that sound. Um, so, like a jet engine is about 150 decibels. If you stand right outside of it, you might pop your ears, and beyond that, you can die. There is this horn that uh, the European Space Agency has built. It, it creates and generates noise that's even more than 150 decibels. They they, they made that just to test objects bringing objects in front of it and see if those objects would not break and shatter. Because rockets, when they send them up in the atmosphere, they generate that much noise. So they need to test what kind of materials can withstand that noise, right? So a scream can kill people, right? So all that happened is Jibreel came and there was a loud scream and everyone was done, finished, annihilated. You, we don't need angels to calm down or army to calm down. This means woe to the slaves. How sad, how sad it is, how regretful, how remorseful over the slaves. Not a single prophet comes to them except that they used to make fun and mock and ridicule that prophet. Don't they see how many generations we have destroyed before them and they have never returned after we have destroyed them. And everyone will be gathered again in front of us. So many different signs for them. Another sign is the dead earth in winter now. Right? If you go around, you won't see any trees that has green leaves and birds are chirping. It's all dead. A dead, dead land. We revived it, gave life to it. And we took out grains and seeds from it. From that they eat. Don't they see that right in front of their eyes? That's a sign. 
and we placed on the earth different gardens of palm and grapes and we gush forth fountains from that earth where can you find another planet like this where grains are growing and waters are flowing and gushing forth grapes and dates and all of these things any other planets scientists have been looking for years millions and billions of galaxies but nothing can they find that is like the earth right you know, the south, a lot of times in the Middle East, they give a lot of importance to the date tree. And even out of back in the days, the date tree was very important to them. That's why examples of date trees given all the time in the Quran and Sunnah. The reason is because they used to make their living off of the date tree. And so even the Saudi flag has a date palm, palm tree, right? It's so important to them. They know that their forefathers, their grandfathers, they all lived off of this tree. Right? There was no source of barely any other, but the one that was all year round, always giving them provision and food, was that was the was the day tree. And even if it wasn't all year, they can store it, and it will stay good the whole year. And they can eat from it the whole year. If you visit the date gardens in Medina, uh, you will see that they have a big fridge, and in that fridge they have tons and tons of dates stored for themselves, for export, for selling, right? So dates matter a lot to them. So that's why this example comes up often. But anyhow, all of these things are signs for them. So that they can eat from its fruits. And guess what? Their hands didn't make those fruits. Did someone go in the kitchen and put different things together and make a, make a date all of a sudden? Or a strawberry or an apple? Their hands didn't make it. So how come they can't use their brain and say, and ask themselves, where did this come from? It wasn't me, it wasn't some uh, you know, hidden factory somewhere. Where did this come from? Shouldn't they be grateful? Shouldn't they be grateful? Subhanallah, khalaq al-azwaja kulna exalted. Tasbih to Allah Azza wa the one who created all of the different types, all of it, all the pairs. Mimma tubbitul ard, from that which the earth grows, the trees, the fruits. Wamin and fusim, and from themselves, man, woman. And the things that they don't know, under the oceans, in the sky, in the forest, the things that they have no idea about. Why more signs? Why to Lahumul Layl? And the a sign for them is the night. Naslahu minhun naha. We peel off the day from the night. We peel off the day from the night. And when you peel something off, you slowly, slowly peel it off, right? It's not like you do one strike and the whole skin comes off. Sometimes you do it one, two, three, and then you can, it completely gets off. So similarly, the day, it doesn't just all of a sudden, slowly, slowly, uh, the day uh, goes away and the night comes. All of a sudden, they're in darkness. There's a couple of verses, inshallah. And the sun is running on its set course. To an appointed time. And you know, scientists have now are saying that the sun in, in some billions of years is gonna is gonna die out and the energy is gonna die out, right? But Allah Azza wa Jalla has already said that way before that the sun the sun is running to its appointed time, meaning that the sun will also have an end to it. A day will come, the sun will be extinguished as well. There will be no light emanating from that sun. That is the determination and the calculation of Al Aziz Al Alim. And the moon we have appointed for in different stages the waxing and the waning of the moon. Right? Until it comes back like the stalk of an old date tree. You have the date tree that, if you see the stalk, it's just like a crescent moon. Allah again gives the example. Of how the when the sun when the moon comes back to its last stage it becomes like a like a bowl <coughs> of a day tree. It is not befitting for a sun for the sun to take over the moon. Right? Meaning the moon and the sun they can never ever clash. It's been millions and millions of years and never have the sun and the moon have clashed with one another. And can neither the night come before it's time, before the day finishes. Nowadays, night comes at around 5.15, right? You can't wait at 5 o'clock, you can expect the night to come. Uh, another meaning of this is that a night cannot come until a day has come. 
I, only after day come, then night will come. Well, some may, some may say, how about the nights in the, the Arctic poles, the North and the South poles? Well, those are just one long night, right? Six months of night and then six months of day. You don't have a place on earth where it's all night all year round or all day all year round. It's just longer and shorter nights. And everything in his orbit swimming. Everything in his orbit swimming. Right? Look at the wording in the Quran. Wa'ayatul uh, inshallah will continue uh, from here uh, next week. But this is almost half of the Surah Yasin. In the beginning, Allah just establishes uh, the prophethood of the Prophet وسلم, and then refuting some of the beliefs and aqidah of the people of Mecca. And then Allah وسلم, gave them uh, some uh, proofs uh, uh, as to why they should believe and why aren't they believing. And then Allah وسلم, just reminded all of us and the listeners of some of the great creations and the miracles of Allah, وسلم, whether it's the seed that you make your living off of, or whether it's the sun and the moon that you have no control over, yet they, if anything, any miscalculation, any mishap and took place with those celestial bodies, you could be perished. Like the dinosaurs, arguably they say, right? The asteroid came and killed them all, right? So all of those things that you have no control over, something could have happened there, yet Allah is keeping you safe and harmless from those things. Uh, so inshallah we'll stop here and continue from here next week. If you guys have any questions or concerns or comments. Otherwise, Jazakumullah khairan. Allah Azza wa Jalla write this in your deeds of, uh, in your book of good deeds inshallah. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khairan.